Hello friends, this video on hydrogen part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's talk about some physical properties of water. The first one is you must have seen it's colorless and tasteless. It doesn't have any taste. The taste what you feel is the taste of the mineral that is added in the water. But it is generally, if you talk about distilled water, it doesn't have any taste, it doesn't have any color. It has high freezing point, high boiling point, high heat of operation. When you compare H2O with H2S or H2SE. Why? Because in this case we have hydrogen bond. Because of hydrogen bond, because oxygen is electronegative, we get partially negative charge, get partially positive charge, and then the hydrogen bond is developed, right? So if you compare H2O with H2S or H2S with a similar structure, uh, but in this case we will say H2O has higher boiling and melting point and higher heat of vibration because of the hydrogen bond. Correct. It has higher specific heat capacity, higher thermal conductivity, higher surface tension, higher dipole moment, higher dielectric constant. We have studied all this in the past few slides where we talk about surface tension, dipole moment and all those stuff. It has high heat of vibration and this is responsible for climate and body temperature moderation. In our body we have huge amount of water and that helps to moderate the temperature of the body. It is a very good solvent. It is a very good uh, solvent and it is also required for uh, metabolism for human body. We also need water. We need drink water because all this metabolic activity in the body is uh, they, they consume water. Right? And because of the hydrogen bonding with polar molecule, even some covalent compounds like alcohol and carbohydrates can dissolve water. So it's a universal solvent. See, uh, the ionic compounds anyway dissolve water, and some of the polar covalent so, uh, some of the covalent compounds also dissolve in water because of the hydrogen bonding. So if you see, compare the water property in D2O, we will we'll study D2 in the next few slides. This is called heavy water. So if you compare this, we will take the slide later also. So if you see the molecular mass, hydrogen is less, D2O is more. Melting point also if you see the D2O is more. Boiling point also is little more. And most of the thing if you see, is more actually in this case of D2O, it's little heavy water. But if you talk about other things, density of water is 1. Dielectric constant is 78.39 and enthalpy of formation is minus 285.9. Uh, enthalpy of vaporization is 40.66. Enthalpy of fusion is 6. All this stuff. Let's take out some chemical property of water. The first thing is neutral to litmus paper. The second thing is it has small dissolution. It is very stable. It is very stable and it doesn't dissociate even in high temperature. You have water, you heat it. Normally, in normal temperature and very high temperature, it doesn't dissociate. You need the extremely high temperature to form it as to an order. It's very, very stable. This is amphoteric, that means it acts as acid and base both. Right? This is amphoteric, that is both acid and base. It goes, undergo both oxidation and reduction. It can oxidize, it can reduce also. It has a very high hydrating tendency. So in this case, if you see water can hydrolyze, it can hydrolyze, it can hydrolyze many non-metallic oxide, non-metallic oxide or halides or metallic phosphide, like here somewhere, metallic phosphide or metallic carbide or metallic nitrides so we can see some of the reaction actually for example let's take some halides so we have non-metallic halides SaCl4 you react with water it will give you SiO2 plus hydrochloric acid you can balance this yeah so you can hydrolyze non-metallic halides right and also you can see metallic uh, carbide phosphide nitride let's take this guy CaC2 we'll take the carbide CaC2 if you add water in this it becomes CaOH2 calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas so you see this becomes acidic this becomes basic right so uh, I mean, water, it reacts with a lot of 
metallic oxides, halides, and non-metallic phosphide, carbide, hydride, nitride to form acidic or basic solution. Correct. The next is the hydration. So water combines with some metal to form hydrates. For example, COCl2. The moment you add water, it becomes COCl2.6 H2. From blue, it became red. So hydration is nothing but you add water and water is absorbed. Correct. It becomes dot NH2O. Correct. Another example can be CuSO4. You add 5H2O in this. It becomes CuSO4 dot 5H2O. So if you see, this guy is white, generally, and this with water is blue. It changes the color. So this is called hydration. Please note there's a difference between hydrolytic reaction and hydration. In hydration, there's no reaction as such. You just add water and the color change, right? But in case of hydrolytic reaction, the metallic, non-metallic oxide or halides or metallic phosphide, carbon nitride, they react with water or hydrolyze with water to form acids or base. Example in this case, it form a base COH2 and acid with HCl. Okay. And also, it's good solvent. So, due to its polar characteristic, water is very good solvent in both ionic and non ionic compounds. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.